Okay, here we go. This is the Avocet ABS lock, which has a magnetic element in it. This is, in my case, the fifth um, pin. It has this pin that is pulled down to the shear line by a magnet in the key. We're going to simulate that. And we're going to simulate it by placing a magnet at the fifth pin spot and then using the metal of a device to pull down, just as the key would, uh, on that magnet to hold the pin at the shear line. We only need to do this at a point where we have uh, uh, outer drivers or uh, um, outer key pins fall set, because these are pin and pins, which we'll look at, I think, when we get this thing. Um, okay. So without further ado, the first thing we're going to do is show off a tool created for this uh, placement. This is one of probably a million different ways to place the magnet. You can place the magnet um, after you get the false set, before you get it, whenever you want. But because my magnet setup is in the last pin place, I'm going to put it in at the start of the pick to get that bit out of the way so it doesn't wreck uh, getting the false set. So this also, um, I started with, uh, for this part of the tool, a music wire, but it is metallic and therefore magnetic uh, attraction happens. That just because it's metal doesn't mean, I mean aluminum, this. It's also metal, but it is not a ferrous metal, so it's not going to attract the magnet. So that's part one. The tensioner acts to tension the lock, but it also acts as a runway, a non-metallic runway in the keyway for placing the lock. The pick, um, this is a, a flat flag dimple pin started life that way. And I was going to just uh, cut uh, a pick to put the magnet on. This has been a suggestion of this is how you can make a special tool, which is a requirement for the brown belt. But actually what I've done is I have carved in, filed into this uh, existing flag to give it a thinner profile for the runway and a curve around, you can, I hope you can you see it kind of here, there's the curve, special curve for the magnet. There's a little magnet on that. And I'm using, deliberately using the flag part of the pick. Now some people will use um, something non-metallic to then, or non-ferrous magnetic to shove. This will have two things to shove the pick, but I have or the magnet into the chamber, but this is, this is the next part of the tool, is that if we consider the vise to be a third hand, this kind of elastic guy wire becomes a fourth hand. And Like so, it keeps I'll show that to you. I don't think I can put it in that exactly looking through the camera like that, but it's got the runway, if you will, nice and flush to the wall of the lock. And then I can guide this in with both hands to steady it um, into the lock weight, the curve as it go around the pin stacks. And then I should be able to, as practiced, but it's on camera, so that always screws things up, but lever this in against the pin stacks and push up to place the pin. The interesting thing is that sometimes if you're already into the false set, you don't need, you can do this rig and not have to leave the magnet in there. You just use it to pull down the pin, you get a deeper false set, and you bring the pin out with the magnet. But for this one, I'm just going to show you how to place the magnet using this rig. So, I'm going to turn it back this way. That's just for my benefit and maybe less hands in the way for yours too. For, okay, over. Bring it back in. Mm 
I usually hear a bit of a click. When it's done, it's absolutely flipped around. <laughs> Which else can happen? Then if, if this is just a two millimeter wide uh, magnet, I'm imagining if you had a four millimeter wide one, that might not be as much of an issue. This is also a good reason to do it at the start of this process because it can be a little tedious. That's the sound of it, I think. Yes, okay. Apologies for that, taking so much time. Hopefully this next part won't. So we can get rid of the guy wires now. And the next thing here, I've noticed with this lock, is um, I'll be using uh, number six, multi-pick and number seven. The six is for the other pins. Is it, it takes very little tension One, three, four, and I find that if I don't get the outer pins to go to that false set quite quickly, I just reset, do it again, because they'll go pretty, there's four of them, so it's not a huge mass to worry about. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to reset it. Mm -hmm. One's kind of caught. Two. Get back to one. A little more on one. These are just standard pins relative to their pin and pinness, but they're not serrated, they're not torpedo, not spool. This lock to me has a, a sound when it goes, and if I don't get it, I just like to start over. Mm -hmm. One more on one, 
that's good. Stick this peg head down to the fifth position and just turn it up a bit and then pull it back down while kind of jiggling this. There we go into the other false set now and so I'll grab the number seven because it's a smaller head to get at the inners and you'll hear most folks on these videos saying that they have um, you know once they get to the inners things are pretty fast and straight ahead. I've actually found that the opposite to be the case. I'm, I'm, I'm personally better with, I think, setting the outers than the inners on this guy. And again, it's just kind of going back and forth. I tend to be tapping the tensioner quite a bit. There we go. That is an open, and I don't have to open it further because then trap pins get engaged and that's no fun. Well, I guess it is, but for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, getting to the next part, I'm going to retrieve the magnet. I'm not sure. Can you see that? It's right at the back there. I see the nice thing about this little kind of pizza peel hook is that you can get it off pretty easily. And why would you want to do that right now? Well, that's to have the key in here for the next bit which I still consider a kind of high-risk maneuver. And this is what I think I'm going to start calling the bail bag because I'm putting this in here in case things... Uh, what, would, what did you say about um, things fall apart? The dyers? Okay, so in this case, uh, actually, we don't have to worry about the bag yet. There's the world's tiniest screw head here. Nine millimeter. We've got two things to take off for this core. Not everybody you'll see doing these videos has this kind of core that has um, both these tiny itty bitty little screws to remove to get this little plate out of here that will let the, the core come out. It also has this very awful, <laughs> probably great, circlip that once you take it out, of course, it deforms a bit so it doesn't go in as sweetly as previously, but we have these two things to remove to get this guy, and then I'm going to put in a shim and just do your basic gut. Okay, so we're taking off these two screws, or at least one is needed to let this little plate free. And actually, I found that taking both screws out is necessary to get the core out. Hope you liked my tool. I was going to have this little uh, nanite trebuchet. Um, we actually kind of do uh, cellular machines, but uh, it would have only been conceptual. I was told it actually has to work. That sounds a little wonky, doesn't it? 
but there is a screw and it is simply holding this little plate in place. It's kind of a clever design. You know, who am I to say it's a clever design? It's, it's interesting. I still don't have that screw out. These are tiny, tiny little screws and yet it feels like it takes a million years to get them out. So there they are in there. And here's this little um, mushroom cloud. And that's how you can think about how it has to um, get back in. Is that it's like a little, <laughs> or tree, however you'd like to think about it, um, that sits in here. And then the screws go on, seem to go on either side of the tree. Okay, now the uh, less fun part. Actually, I'm going to start to feed in for luck. Um, turn the key a little bit, which lets you feed in the shim, which you'll notice that the core is not moving out. Why is the heck is that? Well, it's this. circle up and I also have pliers around here to help pull that out. Perhaps because I have done this earlier today when I was wondering how the heck do you gut this thing, why isn't the core coming out, that this is a little more ready to pull out. This is going to be a first though for me for getting the core all the way out. people watching this going, oh, I can't believe you're doing it that way. You're going to wreck it. You can see something already removing itself. I wonder if that's a pin. God, I hope not. Bosnian bell do. What is that? I don't know. Is that a wafer that just fell out? A magnetic wafer? I was pretty sure I had this whole thing out earlier today. Yep, there it comes. But there's the little... Oh! <laughs> That's what happened. I, I had another magnet in here earlier, and it just disappeared into a black hole. And I guess not. I guess somehow it got into the lock body. Okay, so we have so far a lost magnet, two little screws, this really intense clip. Now, we have the follower shim. Is the shim in as far as it can go? No. Do you have any fun? Okay, so the cord is already starting to come out. And just because I'm being extra cautious after. Yeah, things going crazy previously, and this is new lock, and all I've heard about it are horror stories. And I've already screwed up, haven't I? I've got that typical ball bearing. There are the pins. Coming out like crazy. Where the heck are the pins? Oh, jeez, there they are. Totally wrong-sided. Well, that could have been a beautiful experience. There you go. Okay, so not as bad as I thought it would be in terms of stuff coming out. But you probably want to see this. So, so far... show you what's in the bag. Okay, we 
Add those. Screws. And a couple of pins already. This is the closest thing to a multi-lock, which is the standard key pin, and yet, I probably put that in wrong, I did. You want the pin part, the needle end, to be coming through the bottom with the inner pin. That looks like, kind of like a multi-lock. If it didn't, didn't have any serration at the bottom though. So, like I say, close, but not it. Okay, I'll just do those afterwards. It's taking up your time. Now there's magnet thing right there where the key is holding that to the shear line. And a little spring. That's why you want to do this in a bag. So that's what's holding the magnetic element down. Put the key in sucks it down and that's what we were doing with our magnet. Uh, see, it, it blocks the way when it doesn't have that magnet holding it down. Okay, and as you can also see it doesn't have anything except that one pin because the rest of the chamber is taken up there. So it's kind of a doing the duty of an inner and outer pin, a pin. Let's just call it a pin. Okay, nothing special in the chamber per se. Well, there's lots of special things about where the trap pins are and so on fall into, but it doesn't have any countermounting. Now, if you're gonna look for all the stuff on the inside, like the driver pins that are missed by Going back in the bag. Hmm. Springs flying everywhere. Well, you know what's bound to happen. This is why this is a bear so called of a lock to put back together. These are side trap pins, not core pins. Well, let's just deal with that like an adult. There's a spring there, there's gonna be a spring there. So these are the trap pins coming out here. What we really want to get at though, when I say we, you know, it's, it's the community we, are these driver pins and springs, which are kind of interesting from what the other videos have shown. Yeah, because they are springs. So we didn't realize that was not in frame. So we have a spring, that's number one. Now we move that trap pin. Screw up here, trap pin, trap pin. Don't have to do these for this. Okay, so we've got the pin and pin spring. One, two, spring, driver. What am I doing here? Can you see that? Oh. Hope so, because I'm going to pull this down again a little bit further. This is the shim. And there goes everything. More trap pins. What the heck? What the heck, eh? Here comes another pin and pin. They're all the same for the standard pins, or standard pin and pins. 
And last one. There you go. And there's another trap pin, the last one. The core. I almost called it Mr. Core. I don't know why. Okay, so that is the empty core. <laughs> more, more little trap pins and bottoms of pins falling out. Let's see what we got here. Okay, there's these bottom pins are holding this bar in for holding the two sides of the lock together. We don't need to take that apart. Okay, let's go after the rest of this mechanism. So. What you can see is that there's the driver pin has a, a, a spring, an outer and an inner, and then an internal spring. It's very different from the multi-lock. And that together is a driver pin. And we have a whack of those. This one is leading its spring. Sorry, just put my head right in there. We have a little trap pins in their springs. And a few in the bag. Ball bearing for the detent for the um, the, the core sits. Keep it sort of angled. I can see why the term bear is used for putting these together again. Magnetic element. Again, no need to worry about the um, trap pins for this particular uh, gut, but there they are anyway with their associated springs. 
and then we have one, two, three. I don't think that's all our parts. This one does have its inner pin. And I can put the over here. With the key. There we go. Lines up the key nicely. Two. We can. Apologies. Why do I keep doing that? Nerves. It's nerves. There we go. Voila. So an interesting driver orientation where we have springs and springs or blocks. Show that to you. And all this weirdness. I'll take a picture of it and throw that in too. Oh. And okay. I think that is all.